So let's go ahead and start. <clears throat> it's a minute early, but uh, the things have hap started happening in the chat, so let's just get this thing going. Welcome. It is Saturday morning, 10 in the morning, where I live. Um, this is another episode of Unhindered by Coding, um, where I, Nick McPhee, am learning Rust and attempting to apply it in a variety of places. Uh, and normally on a Saturday morning, we would be working on the web app. I'm still totally stuck on the OAuth prop part. And until I can get something to move on that, there's really not much point in coming back to that. Um, to be fair, I haven't spent a lot of time on it since last Tuesday. Um, been busy doing other things. <clears throat> but yeah, until I can sort of figure out what the OAuth bit of that is going to look like, I am stuck. Um, and I don't really want to waste people's time with me really not knowing what the heck's going on or how to even get started on that. Um, so, uh, so that's kind of on hold. Um, but I think we're making progress on the evolution of computation stuff. Um, and I think there are some interesting design uh, questions in Rust. Uh, I think some very interesting design questions in Rust about how we best create a fairly general uh, tool for doing evolution and computation. Um, and uh, I've got a lot of useful suggestions and I look forward to more. I've got actually some specific questions uh, before we get back into the um, uh, writing new code. Um, so let's get started. Let's uh, go over here, make that go away, go find our code. Um, so one of the things that we did on whenever we last did this, uh, I guess that would have been Wednesday night, is uh, we created two versions of scoring uh, test results. So there's now a score struct and an error struct. And the idea was that in evolution computation, sometimes you want up to be good and sometimes you want down to be good. Um, and so uh, we went with the name score for up is good. Um, so the idea is in general, if a score is higher, you consider that good. And error for when down is good. In general, you want less error. And then we use the ord and partial ord traits to uh, say that error goes down and we just use the default um, implementations of ORD and partial ORD on score because those will have up is good. And one thing we didn't do is demonstrate that it works. Um, and I did that for myself later, but I'm going to do it now, partly because it's cool and I think that's nifty. But also it points out that there's clearly a design issue um, with the current setup because it takes way too much to change between the two. I mean, it would be nice to be able to kind of have a, you change it in one place as part of specifying what the problem is. This problem uses scores, done. Um, and, or, oh, this problem uses errors, done. But no, I, we got to go all over the world and change stuff. And I'm like, oh, that's not good. So um, that's a question. Um, and then the other question, which actually might be a quick one. So I want to, I'll ask it first. Um, this is over in Bitstring. Um, line 112. Uh, right here. Okay. So right on this line, Clippy is grumpy. Um, so what are we doing here? This is mutate one over length. And the, the idea is here, we do a mutation with a specific mutation rate. That's what the mutate with rate is. Um, and the idea there is you're going along, say a string of <coughs> booleans or zeros and ones, however you want to think about them. And you flip one with a given probability. And that probability is the rate that you pass in here. And this mutate one over length uses what is a common technique in evolution computation of using one divided by the length as the mutation rate. That is a common thing. 
So I computed the length of the bit string and then I divided it by, oh, I did one divided by the length. Um, now mutation rate takes an F32 as the mutation rate. Um, and so this 1.0 divided by length needs to be an F32. Uh, but self.len is a U size. And if I don't do anything, then this gets all grumpy and won't compile. I can just resolve the issue by saying, well, let's treat this as an F32 and then everything compiles and runs. But Clippy is grumpy because a U size, which is what self.len is, is 32 or 64 bits wide. But the F32's Mantissa is less than that. It's 28 or I don't remember exactly what. Uh, 23. Um, 23 bits wide. <laughs> and so we'd be putting a 32 or possibly 64 bit value into a 23 bit space. And Clippy's like, well, really, is that a good idea? Because it might not fit. Now, realistically, it's probably going to fit a bit string of more than 23 bits. That's like 8 million. Um, that would be awfully big. But famous lads words in computer science like, oh, this will never get bigger than that. It'll be fine. So I'm not sure what to best do here. I tried, I thought like a try from would be the thing to do, but it turns out there aren't try froms from U sizes. Um, so you can't conveniently try from a U size into other things. And so I wasn't sure what the best practice here was. Some Googling mostly just turned up people saying, well, you wouldn't want to do this with the U size. And it's like, well, but that's what I have and I need to do something with it. Um, so I didn't find those um, comments super helpful. I mean, they weren't talking about my particular situation, but it seemed like when other people were asking this question, the answer was frequently well, don't use the U size. I'm like, well, I don't have a choice because that's what Len's going to return. Um, presumably, I could do something like try from a U size. Well, actually, I don't know if I could try for. Well, I could add a U size to something like um, an U64 because that would always be safe. And then try from the U64 to an F32. That seems kind of clunky. So I don't know, does anybody out there in the internet world have any thoughts on a better way to deal with that problem? And maybe the answer is no. It's probably a somewhat obscure question. <clears throat> maybe I should post it on the um, Rust forum and see if anybody there has uh, any great thoughts. Okay. <clears throat> well, then let's go back to <clears throat> the score and the error question, uh, and then we can see sort of what happens there. Uh, <clears throat> so first, uh, we can run it. This is with um, score turned on, so we get lots of ones. So this problem uh, basically treats every single bit as a separate score. So you do the best by having all the bits be one. Score is up is good. And that works great. And it zips along just spiffy. Now we could make it be instead error and that would be cool and you might think that maybe it would just be a matter of changing individual make child uh takes two individuals and makes a new child individual 
and it has score cooked in in a variety of places and one might have thought that well if we just change the error the scores to errors like i have done here that that would um oh num traits to f32 well hello num rust num traits to f32 <laughs> Uh, I think I may have gone too deep into the woods here. Um, 2F32. Converts the value of self to F... Oh! So if... So I would have to implement that trait... Um, yeah, and actually the F32 max as a default would make a lot of sense. Um, so this trait is not implemented by anything at the moment. Um, oh, oh, so you think if the crate... Um, So if I bring in this crate, I'll get um, I'll get these methods. Scroll down, uh, and I want this. Oh. Uh huh. So then I would get u size. I could say u size dot to f uh, thirty two. Ah. Okay. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, let's try that. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to add this crate because I don't have this crate. Um, cargo add. Um, num trait. What was that? Is that what it was? Uh, num traits. Doodly 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 do. So now I have the crate added, and oh, uh, I'm gonna want undo my swap here because we let's not get confused do too many things at once and then in bit string we're gonna need to use that um, num so num is a trait right um, rust num trait no that takes me back here um wait is it too are you talking about num trait here or is something different but um gotcha um so that's like when i yeah. And so you, what you're suggesting is that where we've got the I-64, we can put a generic in there that would be, that would implement some kind of numeric trait. So we'd be saying, we don't really care what the um, particular num numeric you're using, as long as you're using some kind of numeric, and then it would be able to do all the math and stuff. Um, so that could be very cool. So, um, so this, this, <clears throat> this warning from Clippy was in some ways pointing us at <clears throat> that larger problem. Maybe, I don't know. Um, so I need to import, um, 
this too primitive crate, right? Um, and then, um, well, actually, we'll do. Let's go. We'll just go down to twelve, and we'll say self dot len dot. And it's two um, F thirty two. Boom. And then that probably imported the right thing up here. Yes. Brought in num traits too primitive. Nice. And now this is grumpy. Why is this grumpy? Um, oh, it's an option. Sure, sure, sure. Because maybe it doesn't fit. Um, and so then I have to think about, I think we'll just do an expect, um, uh, the number, or is the genome length, didn't fit in an F32. Boom, 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 self.len. And let's like move this down to And actually, I think we'll we probably typically put that there. And why are you grumpy? Uh, oh, you have to use format bang, I guess. Or not. Oh, so actually, yeah, right. We were going to talk about using um, a default, and that actually, I think your, I think your F thirty two max is actually probably a good idea, because one over that is going to be so small that, I mean, if I, I, I'm a little unclear. I've never run, personally run into. Or heard about anybody doing anything where their bit strings were in the many millions of bits. So what makes sense as a mutation in that context, I think is totally not clear. And so, um, uh, uh, right, so that would be true if you had um, 10 million versus 20 million, you'd end up with the same mutation rate. Um, which is basically like one over F max is basically the smallest non-zero positive value, I would guess, or something close to it. And there's probably even an F32 little tiny positive value constant um, that we could use instead, because I don't know if one over F max is going to give you the smallest um positive floating point value or not. And that's probably what you actually want in this case. Um, but I think if we start with F max, that's not an unreasonable solution. So I think the expect here is not the right thing to do. So we've got an option and we want to do, is it or? Okay, or? Trans Oh no, that makes us into a result. We don't want that. Um, or else, probably, or something. Eh. Dot or. Uh, or else. Now that looks like that's a function. Unwrap or. Aha. Bingo. Yes, there we go. And then F32 max. And so actually min positive, that's probably the one I'm thinking of. Um, 
So what is, if I just choose that for fun. Um, So that is the smallest positive value that can be represented. Um, and that's probably what we really want. Um, uh, well, hmm, that, I feel like, I mean, the obvious thing there is a match arm um, on whether this is some or none, uh, and then set the mutation rate accordingly. Or, ooh, could we do, if we say rate, let's say mutation rate, and let's take the, yeah, we'll leave that there. And we can say dot map and um, uh, 1.0 over L. And that will do the division if we get a uh, sum. And then we can unwrap into min positive. And then we'll just use that right here. Wah, wah, wah. Uh, mutation rate. And why? Oh, no. Yeah, nobody's grumpy. Hey! Well, that's nifty. Okay. So we convert to a F32. We take the reciprocal if we've got an actual value. And if we don't then we'll say we want min positive and by putting this at the end and sliding the map in between we get to put in the value we want that's the value after division um, after taking the reciprocal cool so that's actually quite nifty I like that um, so I, let me make a note change the note that I had um, the smallest possible positive F32 value as the mutation rate if the length of the genome is too big to fit in an F32. Um, this could behave weirdly if we have really long genomes, but those are likely to need special mutation operators anyway. Boom, boom. Okay. I like that. And now we ought to be able to confirm that we still get happy land. Um, oh, I meant to rerun it instead of adding the crate again. Um, so we'll have to recompile a little bit. And we go to all ones, zippity split. Nice. Um, make you a little, little tar so that we can see this. There we go. Um, so now if we go back, very nice. Oh, actually, I should commit that. That's a nice, small focus change that totally can be committed. Um, oh, that's me faffing about with some stuff. Um, that's some more faffing about with some stuff. Okay. So really, the part that matters... Um, is this guy and so the cargo bit string and I'll leave that alone for now. So, 
um, use num traits create to convert u size to u to f32. Um, this resolves a clippy warning in mutate one over length thanks to Wagafa at Twitch and is it Sue at Twitch for the help. Boom. La 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 la. Okay, awesome. Um, yeah, I, I have found, and, and this is actually probably useful for me as an instructor. I find when I program on my own, I commit much more consistently and in little ways than when I do it here on the stream. I think when there are people watching, I am less... I feel like I'm not making good use of people's time if they're watching me commit things. And so I think I don't do it as much as I would normally and as I would like to. And, and this is probably important because it may be that students feel the same way when they're pair programming that committing isn't um, a good use of the pair's time or the group's time. Um, and so they're focused more on the work um, of coding and less on this kind of bookkeeping. And then they end up doing these big commits that are all over the file structure. Um, and I think they feel dirty too. So, um, yeah, I think that's awkward. And um, I'll have to keep that in mind. It's useful to sort of try to put myself in their shoes sometimes. My, there must be some sort of wedding going on. We live about a block and a half from a church and their parking lot is full and there's a big queue of people out on the street. Um, so, and you cared about that a great deal, I'm sure. Um, so that was nifty. I like that. Yay. Um, and actually, since we're just talking about, I'm going to clean up. Um, so I'm going to leave that alone because we're going to change all that. And I'm going to get rid of some necess unnecessary um, delete unnecessary uh, clippy directives. I didn't, I think I didn't realize at the beginning that if I put them in lib, that they would then cover all the things that lib was on top of. And so I had them scattered across a whole bunch of files, but it wasn't consistent. Um, and so I kind of realized that this morning just before the stream and cleaned that up, but I didn't commit it. Um, boom. There we go. And we'll leave lib alone because we're about to change that. Okay, so lib. So if we want to change from using scores to errors, it would be kind of nice if something simple like this could happen. Uh, this does not work. So you get all kinds of screamy bits. Um, and the real problem isn't actually here. It's that, let's see, right here. Um, uh, there's score is built in to this function here. So we got to change that error. Um, so it's in this type. Um, and then it turns out that then will bleed out into other places. And it's not super helpful because it's just like, this is the wrong type. And the problem is that generations here thinks it's going to, thinks it needs to be a score when we're providing an error, but that's an inferred type. So then you got to figure out, well, why is that being inferred uh, to be a score? Well, that's probably part of why that's 
So though it can't spell, being inferred to be a score. Um, but that doesn't make this go away. Um, and this is still being inferred to be a score and not an error. So you're like, where is that coming from? Uh, that's being inferred to be a score. Oh, look, there's a score there. That probably needs to be changed. Um, but the, there's still issues. Um, this is still being a score, and this is still being inferred. Oh, no, that's now an error. That's a win. But this is being inferred to be a score. So we scroll around some more. And actually, you now where is the... Oh, right here, there's a score. Um, uh, so this run tests. Um, in the constructing the initial population, it constructs the initial population with scores instead of errors. Um, so this is, needs to be changed. And then here we've got error, score instead of error. So that's not, not great. Then I think that actually fixes them all. Um, and hopefully we can run it and we should get all zeros instead of all ones. So we rebuild, 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 rebuild. Yay, we got all zeros. So it works. Switching from score to error does invert the direction in the way that we wanted. And that's very cool. But it sort of bleeds out in ways that are awkward. There's a lot of places where this shows up. Now, I think two of the big ones are here. So this closure takes a bit string and returns a um, test results object. And we have essentially the same down here. Um, this does the, yeah, it's not in a closure, but these two lines plus this line essentially do the same thing. So there's a shared function there that probably ought to be pulled out. Um, and, um, that would fix some of it, but it doesn't fix all of it because there's still um, like a specific reference to error here and a specific reference to um, error here. Uh, and we don't really want to have to say what that type is. So we, th I think we want to genericize that type. We might need a trait, a super trait for um, uh, score and error. Maybe we need a type that's like one of these things. Although maybe ORD is all we need. Maybe it would be sufficient to say we want something that is or, and since both score and error implement or, that would do for us. Um, so, so I'd like to actually kind of try to clean that up because that I found that conversion I find very annoying, and it'd be nice to be able to. It's just a demo, if nothing else, be able to like, look, we can change from here up to down, boom, it works. That's cool. So I think the first thing I want to do is do something about this bit string to results business. Um, and yeah, we need to be able to sum them up. And so we need So we're going to have to have something that converts a genome to a vector of numbers. Ah, from I-64. 
Maybe. Um. Although, I mean, are, are, are you thinking I sixty from I sixty four is a way to get from the vector to the total? Because if you are, I'm sort of thinking some I like better actually, um, because I think it makes it clear linguistically how we're getting from one to the other, and I think that. I prefer that clarity. Um, so, so I feel like there should be a function. Um, oh, and this results it or here. I see. Um, oh, so we could convert from an I64 to an error. Ah, sure. Or a score. That actually makes a lot of sense and would be cleaner than my little closure, perhaps. Mm. So actually, maybe that's a good, well, okay, good. I like that. I like that. I So having a from I-64 for both error and score seems to make sense. Um, so let's do that quick. Oh, and actually, while I'm here, this is the individual module. And uh, in fact, um, with this testing in place, uh, the first 125 lines don't have anything to do with individual. Um, and in fact, individual is um, less than half of the whole thing. So I kind of think it would make sense to move all of this out into a new module. Um, so the, oops, come on. Um, I think this belongs elsewhere. Cut. I want a new file. Um, test results. Dot rs. Boom. Boom. And probably should have. Well, actually, I probably just need this or parts of that. Um, wah, wah, wah. I have to clean up the. Import um, in a hot second, and then lib is going to need to use my test results and individual. We will save, and now. Uh, individual is going to have to. Mm. Oh, Lib's going to have to import some stuff. Oh, yes, because all of this is now in a different place. Um, so, boom. Use test results. Doodly, 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 do, 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 do. Oh, semicolon would be useful. Uh, that takes care of that problem. Uh, it turns out population must bring this in. Yes, it does. Um, use create test results, test results, and then individual. Just like that. And then bit string is broken because it pulls in. Use create test results. It'd be a place where it would be nice if there was a refactoring option 
in your oh I want an individual there uh, in your stuff that um, could just say move this to another module and it would like go there uh, and then we would be happy um, so let's see test results bringing in borrow and it doesn't need it um, just needs ordering and uh, is individuals imports yeah we're good there okay so back over to test results so we were going to impl, and I never use this I-64 score. Um, and, you know, maybe maybe what I was kind of thinking of with this I-64 score was your from idea. That I was going to give a name to an I-64 score, but maybe what I really wanted in some sense was a from. I mean, I realize they don't do the same thing, but I have a feeling that what was in my brain um, about that was perhaps actually really more um, a from, and I just didn't think about it that way. Um, so from uh, I64 for score, uh, Fun from uh, I I sixty four to score. Oh, I guess it'd be self would make Clippy happier, um, and we want to return a self score I sixty four. Oops, score I. So actually, I could just say score here, and then I could just say score here. Yeah, that's better. And that does a thing. And then we would do the same for error. Impl from i64 for error. Fun from error i64 self self error. Well, and I must say, I still really don't like error as a name. It's, I think, the right name in an evolutionary computation context, but it's used by so many crates um, in Rust land. I just, it seems like a source of confusion waiting to happen, and I don't like it. Um, and so if anybody comes up with a better name, I would love to hear it. So now, with that, in theory, we shouldn't need this. At a minimum, we ought to be able to say, um, well, actually, shouldn't we just be able to say that? And if results has a known type, um, it'll do the from for us. Um, and is this is the problem here because of the reference is that why it's blocking um, oh, a trait from iterator oh and, I, and I'm not looking for a so I would need to implement a from iterator that goes from a reference to I64 to a um, an error or a score, or just use into iter. So if we do into iter, then yeah, we don't. Mm. And so, and then we would map and can we just say like, um, from I 64. No, that's 
that's not happy. Oh, the this probably goes here, right? No. Uh, I'm not doing this right. Um, so we we want somehow to have the name for this. So it's from I sixty four. Oh, is it score from? Oh, oh over here. Um, ah, no. Still fussing about from iterator. Um, I'm not doing something right. Um, so just from from. Okay. Weird. That works. So it basically looks through all the implementations of from little from in big from and finds one that has the right type. So it knows it needs to be an I64 coming in because that's what the iterator gives us. Um, and it knows we want an error because somehow we've force that somewhere in the world probably actually right here because total results going to be of type error and results is a vector of the same type as total result so it knows it has to go from an i64 to a an error and so it can just look that up in its little database of implementations of from well that's weird huh I find that not super clear. Now, why would we prefer this to implementing from iterator over um, here? And we've got from, it's not like it would be hard to implement a from iterator over here as well. And then this comes code we lose the map right and we just collect and so this we don't have this somewhat mysterious mapping although the mapping does make it clear that we are doing a tight map whereas without this you'd probably have to look at it a little bit to realize that Otherwise, it might look like nothing's happening. We're just creating an iterator and then immediately collecting. And it's not obvious that there's any action. Um, you say collecting to a vec, not a score. Correct. And that, and the collect could if this was a score and we had some way of converting a vector of scores into a single score, we would use the same syntax and it would all just be driven by the result type. And here it is clear that we're mapping a vector to a vector. Um, Oh, so, oh, so from iterator returns a single value instead of, um, oh, okay. I think that was something I didn't understand. Rust from iterator 
Wah, wah, wah. Luckily, Google knew what I meant, if not what I said. Come on, load. Just a web page, you can do it. Hello. There we go. Ah. Uh, so that would give us a single instance of self. So if we implemented from iterator on score, we would get a single score, not a vector of scores. I understand. I didn't get that that's what from iterator was doing. So it's a way of letting us take a vector, well, an iterator, and generate some value. Um, but if we implement it on a type, we'll get that type, whatever that type is. So implementing it on score over here would be bad because we would take an iterator and get a single score or a single error. And that's not what we want. I'm with you. Okay. So this does seem to be the reasonable thing to do. And it was just suggesting from iterator. I'm not sure why it was suggesting from iterator. Um, don't know that that was super helpful because it should have known this needed to be a vector. Um, uh, oh. So we could have a from that takes a vector of I64s and creates a test results out of that, which I think is kind of what um, I was... I think that's essentially the function I was envisioning, but I was envisioning it as a local thing in here and not as a more general instance of from. And actually, I like that instance of from idea. I think that's actually maybe really what I wanted. Aha. Uh -huh. And this could be potentially, we would take, um, a vector of numeric values and convert them into a test result. And if we did this the right way, maybe we could be generic about that. Um, so let's actually hop over here. Let's first, let's just do it simple first. And then we can, uh, See about doing genericizing it with numerics. So we want to impl from vec. Oh, yeah, it's interesting. We have R here already. Maybe. So, okay, let me rust some trait. So sum on some iterator, no, some type, uh, takes an iterator and returns a value. So we can sum like F32s to get F32s and I8s to get I8s. Okay. So we can impl that on some type to get some other type. So we can impl sum on score to get a new score and impl sum on error to get a new error. Um, let's maybe try that first. Um, and so we would impl sum score for score. No. Yes. Yes. Um, and then the method takes an iterator 
um, some iter iterator and returns a self. Ah, nice to know. Good. And then this is just, whoa. Uh, oh, so I have to actually say item equals self. And then, no, didn't like that. Uh, Uh, trait object dine self, or is the dine out here, dine out there? Nope. And so you were suggesting that the autocomplete would do the thing. Let's try that. Oh, look at that. And then if we do a to do bang here, this compiles. Look at that. So some, let me understand, make sure I understand what I'm doing. Some takes an iter of type I, oh, where I is an iterator over self and returns a self. Okay. So the, the they put this here instead of here. So we're doing a generic over I, where I is an iterator. And then we, okay. This, this is clearly a part of Rust I de don't, um, I don't really understand as well as I should because I look at stuff like this and I can, I can kind of see what's going on, but man, I would never think to write it this way. Um, and yet this appears to be the way it needs to be written. So that means I'm sort of fighting uphill whenever I run into something like this. I would have, I guess I would have thought the type information would have been over here and not genericized here. Um, oh, and actually right, the docs, they do this where clause. So they do say, actually, I guess I should also do a better job of reading the docs more carefully. So they say it or I, where I is this thing. Um, and so we could do that as well, right? We could, because I think we can, we can put a where in here, right? And we just grab all of this. Boom, boom, boom. And then do we need the, yeah, we do need the eye here. I certainly find that easier to read. Um, but the autocomplete did give me the right thing and flailing through it with you two going, no, not that, um, would have probably been not a lot of fun. So, um, okay, cool. And then the, so then we just want to return, uh, iter, uh, so basically we've got an iterator over scores. If we turn that into an iterator over, um, uh, I 64s, then we can just sum that. Um, and so I think we could just say map, um, uh, s, s dot score dot sum. That did not work. Uh, Uh, oh, 
Hope. Good catch. Thank you. Yes, yes, yes. Um, so that error. Trait bound. Score. It's not satisfied. The trait sum. So that error does not tell me that. I do not I do not look at this error and see, oh, that's what that means at all. I mean I totally get that it's right, but um that's just like I didn't see that. Um so I just need score score that. Um Now, Ugafi, you said Turbofish, but I don't know. Turbofish wouldn't have. Yeah. Um, okay, I won't. <laughs> um, and then we would want to do the same thing for error. Copy. Uh, paste. Because copy paste is never a problem. And there's no reason to be concerned about the. Oh, that was the that was correct. Um, error. Oh, weird. This is like almost the same. Well, I mean, I guess that's not weird. That's totally expected. Um. Ah, uh, sure. So if we had said we want to sum to I sixty four, then we'd leave that we could leave this score out here. Um, uh, and then, and then we would be able to just say iter dot score on uh, in this one and then wrap it here. Well, that's an interesting idea. Absolutely. Impulse sum I sixty four for score. FNs sum I iter I to self where I iterator item equals self oops and then this is going to just be this map here and now then this turns into whoops no not happy um Oh, items are actually, no. Makes it sound like I want an I-64 here, but But we're mapping over scores and getting back a single I-64. Like these really should be scores, right? The items in the iterator should be scores. Like, like here. Uh... Oh, this doesn't return a, oh, this doesn't, this returns an I-64? And I don't need the map. So you're saying get rid of this and then put this back to itself and then make this I64. Okay, it compiles. And then wrap this. 
Oh, I think this is doing not what I thought this was doing. So that takes an iterator of I64s and makes a score out of it. I gotcha. I was kind of going the other way. And so then, yeah, I think I was thinking that we were going from a vector of scores to an I-64, but we were going from a vector of I-64s to a score. And now we don't need the score wrapping here. Oops, too much. Um, because we map from scores to I-64s, we sum them up, and then this impl here turns that into a score again, so we don't need the wrapper. And yeah, we and we need the sum here because that actually triggers this sum up here. So this sum essentially calls this, which will then do the sum of the actual iterator. Gotcha. Okay. And then we could do the same thing for error. Um, uh, error. Oh, and actually, uh, I probably could have, this could be self, right? That still needs to be a thing. But this could have been self here. And then, why are we grumpy? Uh, oh, this is sum. Duh. Yeah. And then we can get rid of this wrapper here. And everything compiles. Everything compiles. That's exciting. Um, cool. Well, that's kind of nifty. And now... In theory, we ought to be able to use some of this stuff over here. Um, so we ought to be able, so actually, hang on. What do we have for test results? Oh, we were gonna do a from on test results and we got wrapped up in the other stuff first. So yeah, so we wanna impulse some and we're going to take a, a collection of score and return a test results of score. And in fact, really, this becomes any type that implements some, yeah, uh, so some t, uh, for test results, I guess I was using R up above. Oops, ah, come on. R. Where R is sum. And actually, can't I just I mean, isn't that really just, oh yeah, impl r, r, and isn't that really just this? And get rid of the, the where bit? Um, no, oh, that's because I maybe haven't done it. Quick fix. Whoa, no, 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 quick fix. Ah, no, don't go to the definition. Quick fix, fill the thing in. Thank you. Yeah. Um,
Yeah. Since this is just some and not something complicated, um, then we could just do this. So as long as we have R that is summable, then we ought to be able to create a test results test results and total result is going to be the iter dot sum and the results will be the iter dot collect and I'm gonna have a problem because I used it after I moved it uh, so so I think actually it's not going to be that bad. I think if we, oh no, maybe it will be. Um, Cause if I process the iterator, I'm going to consume it. Oh, if I do to the vec, then I can um, then iterate over the vector. Sure, sure. So let um, uh, results be iter.collect. And then let total result be, and I, I won't be able to do this because that's gonna, oh, yeah, I will have, oh, yeah, okay. So that's gonna be, oh, that should have been results anyway. And that was gonna be vac of r. And this is going to be of type R, just so that everybody's clear. And now this won't work because we've moved it, but I could say results.iter.sum. Ah, except for the references. And we can't sum references. Um, iter dot copied, and I'll need to add a copy, right? That's what this will tell me. Yep. And, and mm. oh, and this, let's simplify this comma interesting so this copy meant that we just made come on load it up that we were able to copy those values and so this made copies of all of those instead of references. And then we were able to add those up. <clears throat> um, oh, and score and error need to be copy. And I presumably I can derive copy, he says, hoping that it will do the obvious thing since, oh, maybe not. Um, oh, I got to do clone and copy. Fine. We can derive all of the things. And then error will also need to be clone and copy. Now, would it have been... Would there have been a reason not to implement some? Let's go back up here. If if we had implemented some on references to I-64s that we dereference, I guess we, oh, we still have to dereference them before we call dot sum because dot sum on those references isn't going to make sense. Um, So, so if we, I'm just to 
watch this blow up. If I turn that into that, and I then that becomes that, and now, oh. Oh, we had a reference problem. Well, that's annoying. Uh, hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I mean, is this going to be something like that? So you think I could just do this? With the, the sum, but it's that's a little weird because oh well, actually, because the sum. Uh oh, right, impl. This says the sum will live as long as the individual elements, but that's not really true because once we've computed the sum, we don't need the individual elements anymore. The sum should be able to live longer than the items in the iterator. Right? And is it who says no? So I'm misunderstanding something. Um, oh, it's the, um, no. Yeah, I don't know that I understand why. Um, I mean, is it because the iter oh, is it because the iterator's lazy? And but but it says it's iterating over references that have a particular lifetime, and it's connecting the lifetime of the result to the lifetime of the values coming in. And, right, you're not storing the references in the score. If what we were getting out of this was, say, a v we'd done something, yeah, it gets copied. So I feel like the lifetimes of the two things ought to be unrelated. Um, that I don't need the lifetime of the result to be connected to the lifetime of the elements being added up and that this seems to tie them together in a way that strikes me as potentially problematic oh there's no lifetime of the result isn't that what um oh oh sure 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 right score is the result this is saying things about, oh, okay. That was my mistake. Yes, I get it. I get it. I get it. That we're not saying anything about the lifetime of the score. There is no reference to, there's no ampersand reference to the score. So there's no lifetime for the score. This is all about the internals. Okay. I understand that. Um, and then this fails for the same reason so it would need to be usable that's going to have to be this no uh it returns a reference to data owned by the current function um because s.score is local so that doesn't work Yeah. So this now doesn't give us 
an iterator over references to i64s, it gives us i64s, and now this sum doesn't work. Um, and Yeah, so maybe this is really not worth the trouble. Um, okay, I'm going to step away. We don't want to spend forever on this. And uh, whenever I start things with lifetimes, my brain explodes. So, which is terrible. That's a sad truth. But, okay, so we were going to, we did. So we implemented sum for test result. So given a iterator over something R that is summable and copyable, we can make a test result out of it. Um, gotcha. Yeah, and we might let's see let's see if we run into more of the ampersand um, some of ampersand stuff. If we do, we might want to come back to this. But let's see if it let's let the code drive that decision. Um, we could we could between the group of us, we could spend forever um, uh, doing like cool. Uh, develop um, design stuff um, um, uh, well I'm glad I hope you're drinking something delicious and tasty um, I'm just drinking tea but it's only uh, 1122 in the morning so uh, not quite time for the hard stuff yet um, uh, okay so now in theory we ought to be able to use our sum impl to do stuff here. Um, burger, burger. Oh, interesting. Um, okay. That's just too clever for a name. Um, why are you being, my computer's like deciding to spin up the hard drives in weird ways. And I don't understand why. Come on. Beer, burger, burger. I'm just curious. Oh, that is totally not helpful. Um, uh, yeah, that didn't get us anywhere useful. Okay, uh, ignoring that, moving on. Uh, so, <laughs> um, Swedish only beer. Well, yeah, so that, um, I wonder if I put Sweden in the search. Yeah, problem, burger, burger is not a great uh, search term. If I quote it. Oh, there, that looks like that could be it. Is that your beer? Um, I see films. Wonderful to see you again. Yeah, things. There we go. Um, we just found Wagafa's beer. Um, so, um, we are doing uh, some cool trait fun stuff with Rust at the moment. So we're working on the evolutionary computation thing, not the web thing. Um, but uh, we just have implemented some conversion tools. Um, that we're about to try to use. So this takes, um, basically says if we have a type R that we can compute sums of, so we know how to add them together, and we can make copies of, then we're going to implement some R for test results. So this says we're going to take an iterator of these R things, which will be uh, basically wrappers around 64-bit integers, 
and we will create a test results object out of that thing. And so now we're about to see if we can use that to simplify some code here, because there's a lot of code that's, um, uh, <laughs> probably, uh, yes. The internet will remember forever that I'm interested in Swedish beers named after hamburgers. So, um, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll be I'll be looking at some web page later today, and there'll be some weird ad for Swedish beer embedded in the middle of it, and I'll be like, I know why. Um, but still, it's fun to learn cool things. Um, so now, in theory. This results vector of I64, we ought to be able to turn that into um, local storage in JavaScript, like in the browser local storage, I assume. Um, uh, that's something I know exists and I've used, but I've always been a little uncertain on kind of what the what the best practice and rules are around that. So um, it's not something I would consider myself terribly expert on. Um, so in theory, we ought to be able to say, um, and I'm gonna um, uh, results dot into And then this is probably, yeah, it needs a type to know, because it won't know whether we want an error or a score. Right? Oop, no, didn't like that. Oh, I need to make an iterator out of it. That? Um, no, not the answer. Uh, oops. What are you grumping about? Um, So, so we gotcha. This had to be a score. We're iterating over scores or errors here, and this is just a I sixty four. Um, uh, well, since I started learning Rust, I blew up my knee and have had a variety of joint issues. So perhaps, although I think they're unrelated, I could be wrong, but I think they're unrelated. So yeah, so these are I64s and I need them to become errors. So I would need to map them into errors and then I could sum them or use the into right so you do the map into iter um, and then we're gonna have to map can I get away with from from again or am I going to have to provide some more information? Ah, stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. So into iter doesn't know what to make that into. Um, so I feel like I need to 
it's not knowing what to do the conversion here um oh it's some right aha oh how cool okay right we're adding up all of those to make a test result we're not using from to convert them into a test result um we don't have any froms for test results we have froms for errors and and scores so we're adding them up to make a test result and that's a little weird because we're both adding them and keeping them um so in some sense this is a little odd because it does add things but it also keeps the originals um and yeah so linguistically that's a slightly weird thing but i think i can learn to live with it um and then we would just return oh hey all right we don't need this anymore and in fact we would just return test results not rest results we even need the local variable um you know maybe from iterator with collect would be better because we are collecting things together to make something not really adding things together to make something i don't know i i'm, I'm torn on that um uh and i agree completely with Wagafa's comment i think that one of the things i've liked about rust is that i get things like mapping and summing and filtering that I like from the functional universe, but I also have really good imperative tools when I want them uh, or need them. Uh, and, and Wagaf is like great at like, you know, writing Haskell and Rust um, and uh, doing cool functional stuff. So um, definitely, uh somebody to watch um yeah let me just leave it with some for now i'm gonna make a note over here though um consider going from the sum trait to um the from iterator trait and dot collect this isn't so test results aren't really uh, the sum of a collection of R, but more built out of one. But I'm going to let that go for now. Let's see if we can actually get um, uh, more of this conversion cleaned up. And now <clears throat> I just to make it clear to me i do need the error there because without it it won't know what kind of test result i'm built whoa but I, uh, I didn't need that how then so it, it somehow knows this is error so something else is forcing its hand Presumably this guy here. Um, and I think, let's see, I think if I don't have the explicit type. Oh, yeah, I was thinking that failed. Um, uh, oh, yeah, one of these things. 
Um, I, f I find these error messages totally befuddling. Um, and actually, this doesn't seem to be saying anything about error or versus score. So I'm not entirely sure I understand what... Oh, it needs test results. So right here, it's got an underscore versus test, resu test results of underscore. So it does need to know that the population's second generic is uh, a test result. So if we undo this, can we make, get away with that? And the answer is yes. This still knows it's error though. So there's gotta be something somewhere that is using error. Is it just in make child now? Is it just this line? Well, that would be exciting. Error. Oh, oh, no, it's here. Make child is declared to be, can I get away with this? Underscore. Uh, maybe, looks like. And then this make child, can I get away with underscore here and here? No, that one blows up. So, cycle detected. Okay. <clears throat> so it needed to know what this was. Um, and so your idea is to try to make this generic. Can we make it... Um, Something that implements some, do we think? Uh, well, let's just start with R and see what happens. I assume we'll need to have some kind of um, constraints on that type. Uh, cannot infer... Uh, okay, so R needs to be ORed to be able to do that. That makes sense. And R is going to need to be SUM, I assume. Um, uh, right here. Oh, found R but got result. So if we make this SUM... Plus copy, if we need that. Is that going to work? Oh, some not in scope. Uh, quick fix. Important. No. Cannot infer expected R but found error. Yeah, so this is this is saying we're doing something general, <clears throat> but this is being very specific. And so it doesn't like that. Because it doesn't know how R and error relate. Um, what do we do to make the test results? We... Uh, Oh, that was up. No. Right here. Oh, oh, right, right, right. We're building the test results the hard way, and we don't want to do that. Aha. Yes, thank you. 
So, so we get our vec of i64s and we say let test results equal results dot iter dot map and the map was from 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 from, from dot sum close paren and then test results and then all oh no individual test results uh that goes away and this just becomes that oh so close he said um oh trait bound from i64 so i need to make add that as well oh well but that's from uh oh yeah into iter into iter made that mistake again and but i think we're still going to need from i64 on the trait bound for r so I think we need from I64. No, yes. Trait bound R. Yeah, okay. From I64. Hey, except there is an error up on line 38. Oh, poop, these guys. Um, so I need to specify something consider specifying now call make child colon colon error so you think right here? Like that? <gasps> Whoa! Whoa! That did a thing! Oh, wow! So this doesn't have any reference to error or score anymore and it's simply by specifying the type here when we call make child that tells it what type we need and we have it in exactly one place now that is slick oh that makes me super happy go team i like that a lot now let's confirm that this works. It's always fun. Um, no, I didn't want you, burger, burger. Um, so we're currently on error. So it will go down. So we get, so we get all zeros. And if we change it to, in the one place, score, then we should get all ones. Ho ho! Oh, I am so happy. That is a win. That is a total win. Now, do I feel like I understand everything that we did completely? Eh, I think I can read it. I don't know if I could have generated all of that without your amazing help people but that's a step and that is really slick I like that a lot um, and you're right is it to somewhere we got to say where we're up or down but this is really nifty because it, it reduces it to a single place um, uh, that is very very cool I really like that now I must say I'm 
I'm really surprised. I'm going to actually remove this for a second. That change here leads to this error here, which I must say I would have never realized that this error was really about the call to make child on line 58. Um, I mean, it is saying that it cannot infer the type of R declared on population and adding the turtle fish error or score on line 58 forces that. Um, so I kind of think you're right that score is is where this belongs. I think that that we started with score just doing um, a array of score of, of you know numbers i sixty fours, and then we added all this stuff. Um, and you're right. I think that make child. The, the score ought to know what it's doing and probably should return um, test results. Um, and that's probably a change to be made. Um, so actually I'll make a to-do here. Um, oh, so I guess I need, let's put this back. Um, I will leave the score for now. to be generating the test results um, values and it is in charge of whether we're using score or error then child shouldn't need to care and I think that makes a lot more sense um, but I think that in this code this was I, I agree that this was sort of the right way to, to deal with that um, but yeah it is it's frustrating because I, I ran into some errors up here the other day doing something different kind of on the side and uh, I, I think now maybe the, I was flailing around with stuff here when really maybe the problem was somewhere else because I didn't understand how, um, these were related to some of the other type inference issues. Um, so I was focused on the errors I was getting here when the fix was really somewhere well away from that. So I think that's actually kind of frustrating. Um, it's never good when errors are a long way away from the place where they happen. Um, now, a question, let me, uh, I think that's in, I think that's, is that up here? No, that's in generation, I think. Um, yeah, so, and I think this is related to that issue of where errors are happening. Um, oh, actually, I want to, there's a, um, Clippy warning here. Says that, oh, we never used this life. Oh, that's because I added it, um, when we were playing around with references. That's where that comes from. Um, and 177, I, there's a place I could have used self, um, right there. Um, oh, and there's a suggestion 
this is interesting. Um, this is on line 116. So unwrap or, we could have just used map or instead. And then we have that comma F32 min positive and then we get rid of this boom oops yeah oh map or oh takes the value or then then the function yes thank you um, f32 min positive comma Get rid of you. Wah, 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 wah. Boom, 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 boom. Oh, go away. Thank you. Um, so the thing that I have these types here. We're not going to solve this problem in the 10 minutes that are left, but um, I think I want to bring it up and at least get a sense of is this a thing to care about? So in particular, really this guy and this guy are types that are functional fns and i think this is me being sort of functionally um, thinking about just trying to make shorter descriptions of function types what what i'm wondering is whether those should actually be more ec specific traits um that if I should be, instead of just giving names to these function traits, if I should have a specific, like a child maker trait that has a make child method in it, um, and a selector trait that has a select method in it. Um, and then those could be implemented different um oh so yeah so i could but do i want them to be on i mean so part of the reason i'm asking the question is i feel like i get error messages around these selector and child maker things that are really hard to understand um, and the, I think the question, a part of what drove the question in my head is whether making a trait, like I could imagine a, a pub trait, a child maker trait, um, G R beam blurm. And I probably need trait probably has to have a G and an R. Um, oh, much grumpiness. Um, oh, it doesn't like that. Okay, fine. Okay. Um, and then we would have function make child that would take um, an and... Uh, RNG, which is an and mute thread RNG and generation, which is a reference to a generation of G and R, uh, and it would return individual G and R. And so I guess the, the question would something like that give me, um, oh, um, yeah, so that's an interesting question. So, and actually, um, hmm. and then. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah. 
Um, is that going to give me like more comprehensible error messages um, than having these dine fun things? Um, and then I would over in lib this make child um, would I guess need to be a um, a type that implements that trait um, if I did that. So I don't know. I don't have a good sense of whether, um, oh, is my Discord link broken? I thought I updated that to be a, um, an evergreen link, but maybe I didn't get the, um, uh, maybe I didn't get the um, QR code updated. I'll look into that between this stream and the next one, but thanks for the um, mention. Um, so that should be an active... Uh, oh, it says it still expires. No. Ah! I was trying to make a don't ever uh, expire on me um, link. Okay, let's try this one. Maybe I just goofed up my Discord thing. Um, let's try that one. And I will, I'll, let, I'll have to update info boxes and things. Um, so I tried to make a, an evergreen link um, and I think I goofed that, not sure why. And I obviously didn't update in all the places. So I will try to do that between this stream and the next stream. Um, and it's just about the end of this stream, so uh, I'll need to get out of here in a second so I can sort out some things before the next stream. Um, uh, I'll say something about that in a second. Um, but yeah, I don't know like whether I would get better errors out of you know more EC-specific traits versus just types that rename FN traits. Um, and so I people have thoughts on that. I would be more than happy to hear them because um, I'm not super sure like what's the the most rusty thing to do there. Um, so um, and that's sort of kind of my feeling is that everything should be better with traits. Um, uh, so I feel like that might be the thing to do. I think that, that these trying to just have these floating function things, man, do I get weird error messages out of those? And um, maybe making traits would make things better. So maybe that's a thing I'll have to add to my um, uh, um, list of stuff to do. Um, fn select uh, self oh uh, population population gr returns individual gr so I have to think about that but I think that would be better. And one of the things that I'm thinking this would help with is right now my selectors are all kind of um, uh, yeah that's so that's also a possibility um, my selectors right now are all methods in my population so um, Lexa case and tournament, they're all impulse in um, population. And this approach would turn them into separate objects. And I feel like that would simplify things like this, that extracting these functions out of the population type, I get very weird errors here. Um, and I'm 
thinking I might get less weird errors if they were separate deals. Um, and I'm going to actually make a note about the arc dime thing because um, to do uh, maybe change the fn types above to be impuls of these traits. I uh, uh, maybe go from and to arc dine uh, selector etc. Because um, I have run into some issues where the lifetimes on those references get real weird and I get some very strange and hard to interpret error messages. And so having them just be asynchronous reference counts, I kind of feel like you ought to be able to do it with just lifetimes, but I might have a lot less trouble doing it with arcs. Um, and there is a point to just getting it to work as opposed to flailing endlessly to try to find the best possible thing. So that could be a deal that switching to arc would make a lot of the lifetime stuff disappear and I wouldn't have to think about it. And that would be good. Okay, it's 12.01. Um, I'll be back in two hours. Going to be working. Um, I think, um, uh, yeah, right. I think that, that that's references. Um, if nothing else, we don't have to count the references if we use just ampersands. Um, and we don't have to then free the memory when, when the, uh, well, I guess you didn't drop it anyway when it's done. But the trick is, if it's going to live basically the whole time, um, then you're doing a bunch of reference counting to no end. Um, uh, yeah. Um, right, right. And then, yes, because then we don't get this business. Um, and that, yeah, has been no end of weird. Um, so... So I think that actually, uh, I think about that, but that might be a thing to, to poke at next time. So this afternoon's stream, so we'll be here from two to four. Um, for those of you who really want to, you know, uh, be masochistic, um, we'll be doing um, uh, error handling uh, in the segmented, file system client um, it was suggested to try anyhow um, uh, for the air handling and so I thought we'd give that a shot um, uh, so I'm gonna see if we can go through and I mean I think the air handling needs to be improved and I figure this will be a good chance to try anyhow um, using anyhow uh, and then um, we'll have stream on Tuesday, 8 to 10. Um, probably evolution computation still, unless I get some magical um, uh, breakthrough on OAuth. Um, and then probably not Wednesday. Um, uh, I'll be traveling, um, or I will have arrived and be tired. Um, can't spell, there, that's better. Um, so I'm going to my sister's uh, for a long Thanksgiving, um, uh, next week. Um, I am going to try to stream from there, um, but I'm not sure exactly which days, but I won't be doing Wednesday uh, because I'm going to be driving uh, eight hours. 
on Wednesday. So even if I'm there by seven, I'm not going to show up and be like, stop everything. I've got to go stream. I'm going to be like, I need a drink and I'm going to pass out here in the corner. Um, uh, so, um, won't be streaming Wednesday, might stream Saturday, a week from today. Uh, we will see how things go and I'll be on a laptop instead of on this rig. So I don't know what that's going to look like. Um, and that might be kind of weird, but, uh, we'll give it a shot. We'll see where we end up. Um, although actually maybe I could just stream off of my sister's rig. Hmm. I'll think about that. Um, uh, so, but I should be here. I will be here this afternoon. I will be here Tuesday morning and then I'll see where I end up. Uh, and I'll keep you posted on the Twitters and on the discord, uh, and let people know what's going on. Uh, and I'll update the discord links here between now and two. Um, and hopefully I'll see some of you back again, uh, at two o'clock. And I think this today was super successful. I was actually really happy. I think that the, um, the changes we made, um, uh, to test results, I think these, um, Traditions. I it feels very rusty to me. I feel like I'm doing real Rust programming um, to be implementing uh, these cool traits on my types um, and uh, getting uh, this way of building up test results. And then the the way that played out over here, uh, where we could. Uh, genericize, make child, and just sum up the uh, results into a test results. I think that is super slick. Um, I think that we can improve it. I think this probably does need to be in score, but I think this is like really, really cool. So thank you all very much. I think that was a really, really good session. And I will see folks back here in a couple of hours. Thanks a lot. We'll talk to you later. Goodbye.